Please fasten your seat belts. Hey everybody, this is Tabitha Stevens, and you are listening to The Wildlife with Tabitha Stevens. And Gary Orona, even though in the title it doesn't say Gary Orona, there's just too many words. I wanted him on it, and he said no. There's just makes it too long. The title's so. too long. I'm 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 in incognito. Oh my gosh, this. you are so in not not incognito. You're anonymous. He it's talks not, it's, throughout the whole thing. It's all the not time. an ego trip. He steals everything. He does. <laughs> he steals the talk time, the airtime. I don't. Before we get going, speaking of which, <laughs> may I interrupt? <laughs> yes, please do. Oh boy. Tabitha Stevens can be found at TabithaStevens.com. That is her website, her hub. You can find uncensored VOD programming there, and it's fabulous. Lake Lucifer's there. Uh, mm. There's a bunch of other Love shows on there. Uh, your Twitter handle is? He doesn't even know. At no, Miss I know. Tab Stevens. <laughs> what? But the way you did it, it was like, um, all right, that's like, you know when you're like going someplace and you see somebody you know, but you forgot their name, and you want to introduce them to your spouse. So it's kind of like, you're like, yeah, yeah, just go over there and introduce yourself. Then we'll figure out who it is. I mean, this is common. Right. It happens all the time. So that's why I thought you were leading into, oh, it's because you forgot what it was. <laughs> no, no. Be sure to stay closer to these mics. I am. We switched out our mics. We were using these condensers, which are super sensitive, and this room is kind of bouncy. So now we're on mm -hmm. these dynamics. So we have to be right on top of the microphones. Yes. They but sound, I they do sound like really them. good though. Yeah. yeah I do miss our awesome. other ones though. Cause those were really cool looking mics. Yeah. I mean the look of visually, them, they were really visually cool. they're awesome for sure. But for what we're doing in this echo chamber, it really wasn't working. So Twitter at miss tab Stevens. Yes. What's your IG? Same. Um, My the Instagram same. is the same. Miss tab, tab Stevens. Stevens. My yes. Twitter is Gary underscore Orona. And you can find our artwork and all the crazy wild fine art photography pieces that we produce at savageterritory.com. What's with the eyeballs? Um, You're like, roll, what are you doing? The light is so bright. It's no, really... You, no, it's like... No, I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I had so this, you started rolling I just your had eye? this Tazo Chai tea, what? and it was jacked up with sugars and things. And so I'm like, <laughs> I'm kind of bouncing off the yeah, walls right I now. I had like three sips. And uh, fine, huh? my professional site, my professional site is GaryOrona.com. That's my film and television site mm -hmm. for all the stuff that we, we produce there. Okay, yes. now we're so with, fidgety uh, right now. We are. That's okay. This will be. This will be crazy. Oh, and my belly is like so bloated. So be sure to subscribe. Hit the if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, hit the notice. <laughs> if you're watching this on YouTube, hit the. <laughs> Subscribe and I know where this is going ah. and hit the notification thing. So you get notified whenever <laughs> the new podcasts are up. I'm afraid to look over there. There's crazy things Wait, going on. Over there. I know Wh it. What do you know is going on? You say, I know where this is going. Where is this going, Gary? You've got those crazy eyes today. I just accused him of having them and now he's putting it on me. Speaking of crazy, the subject of today's <laughs> podcast oh, no. is, I mentioned it too. Tabitha outside. We were just outside, by the way, and there is a thunderstorm approaching. Mm. We're in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. We're up near the Red Rocks, and there's a thunderstorm, a big cell approaching, and it looks like we're going to get some rain. And it reminded mm -hmm. me of something. Yeah. And so I, I, I told Tabitha, I said, hey, or I didn't tell her, I asked her, I said, hey, listen, she told me. this would be a good subject to talk about. And that is, is, you know, I said the subject of some of the crazy, outrageous situations that I have gotten her into while we were out in wild places filming or shooting photography. And she said, I said, See what's happening outside right now? It's like now. radio silence. <laughs> no, right I there. said, see what's happening outside right now? Yeah. That reminds me of the time <laughs> that, uh, let's see, actually it's a few times where Gary, now are we talking filming? A few times? Are you or kidding me? Or just in me? general. Do you like, know how many times no, 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 I put you in physical danger filming? <laughs> Thanks. This has been a <gasps> See, now he this comes is out a and lifetime. admits it. No, no, but uh -oh. I'm just oh, so shooting. Confession. Yes. All right, shooting. I was thinking of um, when we were out in um, Canyonlands. Right. Not right. the Lake Lucifer time, but the other time when we were just kind of out there shooting when you're doing photography and this big storm hit 
and we had to hide under the little rocks. Like you had me under a shelf. Oh, yeah. Like seriously, I was tucked in this little space. Now, for those of you who don't know, I am five foot three and a half inches tall. And I weigh 100 pounds. So I'm really small. So Gary thinks because I'm so little, oh yeah, I just shove her in the tiny you're, little crack. You're petite. I am very you're, petite. You're petite. I am very petite. So Gary has me in this crack. I mean, seriously, it's like this high and about oh, that wide. And uh, I have my backpack. So I'm, I'm tucking myself into this little crack. And uh, man, the thunder is coming in. The lightning, it was scary. That was scary. And the rain, it was hitting us. Yeah, it went right over. So I put my backpack in front of me, but yeah, it went right over. I was like, that was scary. Right over the tops of our heads. And uh, the the hole that I jammed her into under the rocks was just big enough for her to fit. So her body's sort of scraping against the sandstone that's above her and below her, she's in sand. So she's she's getting down and dirty in this hole. And I just like shoved her in there and I said, stay in there. (laughs) And I went off. There really wasn't a big enough hole for me. But there was one kind of a little bit next. So he wasn't exactly right, like right next to me. And that worries me because I don't want him to be too far away from me, you know, and I have this issue with anxiety. I don't know if you guys know this, <laughs> but, uh, so what you're saying is, I, is that jamming someone yeah, who has anxiety space. issues into a small space yeah, is not it's necessarily not so a much idea. claustrophobia. I mean, I do, I've gotten that way through ang- having anxiety because I've never had that issue before, but you know, since the anxiety, uh, <laughs> all kinds of things mess with me and, uh, being in a small space like that. Right. You know, and that, yeah, you had me really pushed in there. So, that that's was a little nerve wracking. But that's not a day that we had to run. Oh, there's when, a... When we were shooting, okay. so we were shooting one of the episodes of Lake Lucifer. By the way, again, you, if you go to TabithaStevens.com, there are actually links to get her to the VOD channel for Lake Lucifer. Mm-hmm. Really twisted and cool. It is definitely for mature audiences, not for children. Um, go see. It's really cool. Wait, but, but wait, before you finish that. Yes. Um... Do you have photos of um, the area? I think I took some on my phone, actually. I don't know if I can can find them. When when what? When we were shooting Lake Lucifer? What we're going to talk about now. Yeah. Yeah, We have that so we can, people can see exactly where we were. Like, Oh, it was on the edge of a cliff. How how big was this cliff, Gary? I don't know, seven, eight hundred foot cliff. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. really, really a, a tall yeah, cliff. It and, was scary shit. And we were shooting. We were out mm-hmm. shooting images, and all of a sudden, yeah, uh, kind of came out of crazy cell. Nowhere, it was appeared. weird. Yeah. And we ran, and we we actually found an overhang, kind of a, like a little mini cave, and we hid down in there waiting to wait it out, basically. And it went again right, right over, over the tops of our heads, Anyways. but but this one lingered. Oh, it was there for a long time. And the thunder, oh my, it was so loud. And then right next to me, there's this gigantic, I swear it was like this big around, with the legs spread. I mean, the body was about that big. A daddy long legs goes right to the side of my head. Oh, and no. I'm like, oh my God. And there's nothing you can do because you can't just walk out of there. There's thunder and lightning over you. And besides, where are you going to go? Off the cliff, off the side of the cliff. You know, you can't go up because you'll be exposed, you know, to the the thunder and lightning. So it was scary. I'm I'm convinced that Tabitha has hawk eyes. And if there's any insect within a mile of her, she's going to see it or feel it. This is an ongoing issue. But no, it's not just an issue. Okay. Last night. Mm -hmm. Okay. We were watching this show and, uh, this thing on YouTube. What, where were they? That was in Russia. Remember? And they were the, um, the people, the Russians, Siberia, Siberia. And, um, all those bugs. You can't tell me. That was that was savage. Yes. And I kept pointing them out to Gary. You know, like, Alaska's oh a lot like this. Alaska's like that? a lot like this. Oh, oh yeah. I couldn't do it. Absolutely. Saturated. Bless you guys for being out there, being able to do it, because there's no way. Like, that's tough. Like, I can't right. even. No. That's... It, at times, Alaska is literally saturated with uh, insects, bugs, mosquitoes. You know, they're notorious. I mean, these people, for... how could they see? Like, you could see it on camera. Like, it was everywhere, all around these people. And the little kids were being affected. What's going on? You keep looking. You did it again. What? Sorry. Well, we're all okay. on camera. It's all not right. like we're going to hide. Full disclosure. Okay. <laughs> I'm analyzing the show, watching the levels to my right over here, camera left. And because um, I had where the recorder is. And 
in why do you do this? Because you kept looking. She I does this when we're know, shooting sometimes. She'll say, like, I'm moving a microphone or the sound guy's moving a microphone around. And it's like, she'll stop watching. She watches the technical things that are going on and stops. And I keep saying, stop analyzing the technical okay. things and just. Okay. I understand don't that. Don't worry about but it. We can got we time out control. for one second? Yes. Okay. Far away. Yes. What do I do besides act? You are a producer. I okay, understand. Okay, so that's yes. where that comes in. Okay, I understand. But it, so I get a pass. But when you're on, you do. You I do. get a full But pass. when you're on camera, don't mm. worry about the technical I aspects. I know. I'm, it's just a habit. Let us deal with but it. But that shows everyone here too that I'm really good at my job. Um, well, also, <laughs> yeah, but you also stop the, <laughs> right. the train of thought because I'm looking at the levels. I know, that part of the levels, job I suck at. And all I'm doing yeah. is looking at the levels. Shame on me. <laughs> I am in so much so, trouble once so, this ends. So great. <laughs> not really. <laughs> not, not at all. I know. So going, <laughs> going back to the, the Lake Lucifer shoot, yeah. mm -hmm. if I remember right, once it, it lingered, the storm kept going oh, yeah. and going, mm -hmm. it was circling. And so we had to run. And that was probably about two miles. Oh, yeah, and that one, too. I remember we, this other time we ran, And too. rain was coming down. The lightning uh -huh. was overhead. Yep. I'm, I'm carrying a, a tripod, which at, at that particular point in time, I was convinced was probably a lightning rod. <laughs> and we ran. We ran over incredibly rugged terrain for about two miles, two miles. to get mm -hmm. back to the, to the rover. And, uh, no, how about the time? Okay. So there's this other time. Now we were not shooting same thing. We were out in the storm. We were out in the reef that day out in the, in the, uh, what, what would you want to call that? I don't want to call the it by reef. its name. The reef. Okay, if you want just to call, call it, it the reef. Okay, the reef. I'm sorry, guys. We don't. Here's the. Here's the. Real, I know. Real quick. Real I, quick. Yeah, explain. Here's the deal. Um, as you know, we venture in, and adventure in extremely remote wilderness locations, and the the problem is, is we we don't like to give actual names of where these places mm -hmm. are because these places are relatively untouched, and you will never see another human being there. And my fear is, is that we start talking about place names, mm -hmm. actual place names. Right. And pretty soon, every time we head out in these places, we're going to find mobs and... And graffiti and dog uh, shit. <laughs> it's true. There's always yeah, a lot of dog shit. A lot of dog shit. Um, and, that's, so, and those are places that we try not to go to, but sometimes you just want to visit like a petroglyph site. That's a well-known site. But anyway, so we were in the reef mm -hmm. and it's very rugged terrain, like insanely rugged terrain. And Gary and I were out there shooting that day. Um, it was more for his photography. It wasn't, you know, for a film or anything. So you weren't on camera this I day? I was not I'm still, on camera. Okay, so you're so, leading up to this yes. in such a way, remember I, don't, the, I don't know okay, the day. But. Remember the, uh, the petroglyph site that nobody's really seen the teeny teeny tiny little guys yes. remember we were yes. coming down from that the entities the yes. ancient entities yes. yes we should put that in the show oh yeah i will okay I've got so they images. can see it it's so cool i'll, I'll so put images we up. Were up this place is oh awesome. my god it's amazing so we were up there and then remember the storm started coming in and i'm like do we need to go and you said well we have x amount of time it's not it's a little bit further away right and i'm i'm always i'll watch it and i'm always thinking it's going to come a lot faster and sometimes i'm right that day I was right. See, and, I don't remember that. <laughs> yes, remember we were running and it, it got we came we were coming down the hill, and we were trying to leave, but we had to sit under another. We had to sit under a shelf too for that one, and I couldn't run. Like I, I was so tired. Like I, everything was heavy, and I'm, you're like, come on. I'm like, I can't do this. You don't remember that? I don't. And I swear. So what I would do when I was running because I couldn't run standing up, I found it easier to kind of bend my legs. <laughs> And like squat down and run. It was a weird what? thing. Yes. Squat running? Yes, I was squat running. I couldn't, it helped I me. I don't remember this. Well, that just goes to show you, we've been in so many in the, crazy you situations. That, seriously. That I'm not really remembering that. I know we've been to that particular site probably about a half but dozen times. But on the times. way back down, Man, there was I a thunderstorm and we went. I don't remember. We, were, we ended up going towards the right and that's where we hit into another little shelf like thing you were right next to me we weren't in the same okay. one but it was more exposed so there okay <laughs> okay i yes. um, again i mean I, See, I don't another time that he put me i don't remember that one i'm trying to think what else oh <laughs> but there was another scary one where it, we were doing shaman and now i didn't well, realize okay, let me it. let me stop you there when what? we were shooting the shaman <laughs> what <laughs> we had a lot of days where we were in crazy situations. Right. Crazy situations. 
so anyway, go ahead and tell your story, and then I'll I'll tell a few of my stories with respect to that situation. Well, now I so forgot I which story I was going to tell um, of it because there's a couple of them. The sand dune is one of them. Yeah, but that's just a heat thing. It doesn't matter. Okay, so imagine you're on top of a freaking sand dune in 110 degrees, <laughs> and you're wearing this giant mosquito net thing for in your hair that's draping across the sand dunes. So when I'm walking, so think of this, it's almost um, like a long veil, okay? And I had this little sarong kind of a thing wrapped around me, very pretty, and I was topless. So Gary's like, okay, now fall down the sand dune. And roll, and, and roll, roll. And roll, yes. It's 110 degrees okay, It was out. a little warm out, I'll admit. I'm a topless, touch. okay? I am frying all the way down. I'm like, oh my God. I swear, I thought I was going to have some kind of like serious burn issues when I stood up. That was a pretty it, toasty day. It oh, was, it wasn't that the bad. Whole shoot, the right, whole shoot. It was shoot maybe for was you hot. it wasn't we that in the bad. Okay, I love how, he, but this is the funniest thing, how he'll say, oh, it wasn't that bad. Okay, you be the person rolling down the hill. But no, well, you're the one standing up. Sure, but you know, you just... <laughs> You well, suck okay, it up. Okay, but here's, well, that's a good example right. of, you know, a lot of people think, oh, it's so glamorous filming these things and all that. And, and you know, the glamour happens about 1% of the time. Mm -hmm. Most of the time it's oh, excruciating, yeah. especially, unfortunately, with me because I like really ridiculous locations. And it so, is. And so uh, which one were you there is of? suffering involved. No, which one was you, which, uh, which time was it you were thinking about? Oh, I was just thinking about when we slapped all that. We were at Lake Powell. Okay. So we were in Glen Canyon. <laughs> yeah. We had rented a houseboat, and we were we were shooting out there for a week or more. Mm -hmm. And at one point, we needed uh, Tabitha to be hanging from a tree uh, by a long, thick rope, kind of like a noose, but it was it was tied around her arms, like her her wrists were crossed and they were tied, and she was supposed to be hanging from a tree this way. Well, you we supposed to be. I did. Well, she did eventually. But uh -huh. what what actually I remember first though is is that we found a big. The, the the lake has been dropping for a long time, so it's way below its normal level. So there's all these all of these twisted, crazy sort of right. hellish looking trees that have now surfaced that have been underwater and for years and years. And the algae that year was really bad. It was yeah, green, it was mucky, super, and nasty, super green. and so it's really murky, sort of swamp like in some of yeah. these spots where the water has receded. And what we found was this big pile of mud, mucky mud, and it was smelly. And we came up. Oh, it's terribly. Oh, it's smell it. so and we bad. came up with this idea of let's you know let's cover your nude body with this mud and then have you hanging that way from the tree from the tree because we thought that'd be really cool and you're like yeah I'm on. you were super psyched tabitha was super psyched oh, and she was you know i'm on board this is great that looks so cool and so when we started slapping this stuff on her though it was like it was nasty and i didn't realize until afterwards i thought about this i thought wait a second there's probably like boat oil and like yeah. you know people's the camp people that have been camping and like their yes. their and probably that's crap what, yeah, and everything thanks. like in and that he put water that, and it's on my mud. face it's on my body and, and yeah maybe that's why I came up with the dialogue that I came with I created my entire dialogue sequence while hanging in the tree. This was not on the script. This is something I just made up. We decided early on that you should ad lib it because there was right. no way under mm -hmm. the, the circumstances, the physical stress that she was going to be able to actually remember any lines. Oh, yeah, you couldn't. But you so, know what? It turned out great. It's actually oh, it's pretty awesome. popular. People love that one. It's awesome. We should play it because that's pretty funny. Yeah. Well, I can show uh, a video on yeah. those of you watching the podcast on YouTube. I'll put like a little video. Actually, there's nudity in it, though. All right, then we can put it on Vimeo. God damn Let's it, put it on our, We have a channel on Vimeo. Yes, and, we'll put um, it on Vimeo. We'll put it on Vimeo. Why don't we do that? What is your Vimeo? I don't know what your Vimeo handle is. Well, at the end, we'll just... Um, I'll have to look it up. Yeah. And I'll, I'll put text below, so... So, you know. Gary, when you're editing this, put text below that shows the Vimeo handle so people can go see it. I think it's up there right now. See, we're creating right in front of your face. Yes. This is so awesome. See, he was just saying what he had to do. It's nonstop. <laughs> The creativity is insane. We yes. have we have literally books of project ideas. Mm -hmm. And some people say, oh, you guys are so flighty. You're all over the place. It's only because we have so many project ideas. Right. It's hard to choose sometimes mm -hmm. because you can really get married to certain ones and whatever. Then married to him. And then it's like, oh, my gosh, the fun just never ends. But you have to admit. Yes. yes you have so. to admit that mm -hmm. these that if we were shooting in a studio, mm -hmm. air-conditioned, 
climate controlled studio all the time, you wouldn't have these stories. And you wouldn't have, I think, such good performances. True. I True, think because that when, you when you're in people, the element, yes. it really brings the truth out. It's really, well, in this current project that we think we're talking about this film right now, that we might do, we might put it on the back burner, we're not sure, but um, one of the, the discussions we had had with that was, is, well, do we actually build the sets in a studio or do we go out and use a practical location? Mm -hmm. And I was explaining to Tabitha, I said, you know, sometimes their practical locations are much better because you sort of have natural light that's happening. And then what you do basically is you embellish that mm -hmm. to make it work for the piece. Whereas when you're trying to simulate that in a studio, you know, you need more crew members, you need more materials, more lighting. It's much more complex. And it won't really look the same. Correct. Totally. I mean, you can still, I even notice on some TV shows that I'll watch that it, you're doing the, the, is it night for day or day for night? You know, day for night. Day for night. Mm -hmm. And you'll know, you can tell, I can tell when they're doing that. Sure. I mean, maybe sure. some people can't, but maybe because I know what it is. It's just, I know yeah, that it's know. like, no, that's not really yeah. and <laughs> that now, time and, of and, day. And nowadays yeah. with post-production, there's so much we can do in post-production we couldn't do, you know, 20 years ago that a lot of times you just shoot it that way and say, oh, hell, we'll just fix it in post, mm -hmm. which I think is really a lazy man's way to do it and a cop out. But sometimes you have to because of your schedule. You have no choice. But right. Anyway, so so when we when we going back to the lake when we had her hanging from her yeah, wrists yeah. though I gotta tell you like look look I've never hung from my wrists before I have no clue what mm -hmm. that does to the body how it torques you or whatever and so this was completely experimental right. and so when when Tabitha did this the first couple of takes they were very short takes. Mm -hmm. Because I think we were trying to figure out how to get used yeah, so that it didn't it hurt so much. Well, it's, it was also the type of rope we used. It was about a hemp rope. So it's got, you know, it's pretty scratchy. Mm -hmm. And it was probably about two inches in diameter. No, maybe an inch and a half in diameter. Yeah. It was so, not comfortable. It, big, thick rope. It took a minute to get used to. But then once I was up there, I was up there for a while. Probably the longest take, I want to say, is over a minute. You were hanging. That's a long time just to hang and do your dialogue. And yeah. what would happen is I would stand on an apple box and then one of our assistants would come over, take the apple box away. And I was hanging. Well, if I remember right too, one of the things you were most concerned about was your boobs. Yes, because I have implants and um, I didn't want it to be uncomfortable or weird or pull something. Right. But see, that's the same thing when right. I was hanging from shark hooks. When we did the suicide suspension. Tabitha's done a lot of hanging from things. I <laughs> yeah, I don't Like, hey, let's pierce her flesh with shark hooks and hang and pull her, you know, 10 feet off the ground. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was quite... I mean, I'm sure a lot of people know all about that. It was pretty... That was intense. It's an infamous moment. <laughs> yeah, so we did that on film. It was actually... Um, on the E channel, when we were shooting Dr. 90210, we had them come out to shoot with us. And um, we invited them down to the set when I was doing the suicide suspension. And um, that was my first time and only time, really, uh, <laughs> um, doing that. And I wanted to do it. A friend of mine named Matt Zane, um, he had this uh, band. And in his band, it was called Society One. And um, he had asked me to be in his video, his music video. And I said, sure. And he was actually suspended in the video. And... During the sequence I was in, I walked over to him. He picked me up while hanging from these hooks. And we were lifted into the air and they spun us around. And I was like, wow, this is the coolest feeling, you know. But I'm thinking this guy, like he's he's a thin man, you know. He was thin. And it's like here he's holding me an extra 100 pounds while hanging from his flesh. I mean, I think he had four shark hooks. I don't know if he had two or four, but still. Yeah, that's kind of scary, but it was kind of cool at the same time. So I had said to Gary, I said, I want to somehow put that in our show. If we can do that. And, and everybody did. around us was thinking you pretty much had lost it at that point. Well, and then like, they also thought that Gary, that it was like, oh, is Gary pushing you to do it? I was like, no, this yeah, is on did. me. This is me. This I, is me. I, this is, I want to do this. I want to try this. And that's why is I, I wanted to feel the freedom that Matt had. Cause I had asked him if it would you know, if it hurt and you know how he felt afterwards and he was completely fine and he's done it a bunch of times. I think he's even actually gone out of the country on tour and flung out into the crowds wow. while he's suspended. I mean, there's just this feeling of, I don't even know. It's insane. Yet. Like, um, you're just free. You just, it's euphoric. You're just so free. 
And it's all about meditating before they, you know, when they, hang, when they pierce you and before they hang you up on this, what they call a rig. And they put you, they attach you to the rig and they slowly lift you. So you get used to it. And then you're kind of hanging. And at one point they spun me around. And uh, at first when I went up, I had my head hanging down because I was breathing and trying to take it all in that way. And then all of a sudden my adrenaline kicks in and poof, I'm like kind of awake. My arms and legs start moving like they started kicking and it felt so good because you're held up by your, you know, like your flesh on your back. So you're just free. It was the neatest feeling. I'm so, so glad I did that. I wonder as you explain that, something just occurred to me. I wonder if there are elements of the DMT experience mm. that are perhaps slightly activated when you do something like um, a suicide suspension. Well, because it's that, almost like putting your body into shock in a sense. Exactly, because exactly. It's, so like your body, what's going on. So I yeah. would be willing to bet that your oh, body, maybe, your, your pineal... It, it bursts a little bit? probably it excretes a little Mm -hmm. bit more DMT than usual naturally occurring in the body. And you, did you see anything like shapes or patterns or the tunnel or anything like that? I didn't see anything. I was was so into the breathing and I'm sure if I did it again, I would, that's something to think about if you were to do that. But I, that wasn't my intent going in was just, you know, we had a lot going on that day and I wanted to focus on the breathing and just feel you know, just because if you think about it, you look at like the Sioux, the Native American, the mm-hmm. Sioux people, um, the ancient ones that were you doing the sun dance uh, ceremony where they pierce the fronts. The, so the dancers, they, they take a very long, very tall tree, strip the leaves and branches off. They attach ropes to the top of the tree. And then the dancers, whoever's participating, they dance and then they fast, you know, for like three or four days. It's nonstop, like chanting and dancing, chanting and dancing. And what they essentially do is they're, they're tearing their bodies down to, to have that DMT release. Mm-hmm. And what happens is, is that they, they pierce the flesh at the front, right in the chest of the dancers towards the very end after these multiple days of dancing. And then they, they, you know, run the rope through these pierced sections in the flesh and they start pulling themselves back. So they're stretching and pulling and pulling and pulling. And they keep doing this until they break loose. So they're literally tearing through their flesh. And, and by doing this, they enter into these hallucinogenic vision quest trance states which Mm -hmm. is which is most likely a dmt release in in the brain that activates the body and they have all these visions and we won't go into that whole subject on this particular podcast but i would be willing to bet you that you you didn't know at the time you probably had a little tiny morsel of that from you know from the stress the physical stress Mm -hmm. of of being hung from your flesh from your back i mean here's the thing though when i was up there when my arms and legs started going, I didn't say, okay, arms, lift up, legs start. Ki-. It just kind of did it. You know, sometimes you'll, you're going to reach for a glass of water because you know that's what you're going to get. I didn't know what was going to happen. So when it did it, it's kind of like it did it on its own. Does that sound weird? It just kind of kicked in and just, I started moving and feeling and it was totally we'll put, awesome. We'll, we'll make sure to put this, that one back up on Vimeo can so we that put that people on can there? see it. Mm-hmm. Are we allowed to put that? I think so. I think so. So what I'll do, even if if an, I can't get it on video, I'll get it up in in our own private server in such a way that folks can see it. So we'll we'll put okay. the we'll put a link down below on this, and so folks can go see the the sewage, the, the famous suicide suspension. I thought you were gonna say sewage. I'm like, no. well, no, we already talked about the mud, and yeah, isn't that kind of gross? Think about that. Gary put me in a shit vest. Seriously, I did. It had to be. It stunk so bad. It was disgusting. That's not the first time you've done the mud thing, no. though. You and did. at Lake Powell. That's the second time. Ew, so it's twice. Yes. yes. What was the first time? That was the first time. No, when we were, I I was laying on like a beach area, remember? And I climbed up the little tree and put it up my face and then down. Right. And then we did it again. I thought that was the same day. That was the second day. Right, that I was, don't think it was That the was the same, first was day. Yeah, and it we, was two separate times. And we couldn't get it, the hanging part to work right, so we switched locations the next day and did it again. Mm-hmm. And then you re yourself up with mud and Yes, yeah, so we had two different... All that. Yeah, we had two different kinds of... Yeah. So, we had mud a few times. It's fun, isn't it? It's fun sort of torturing ourselves for... For, for our art. For our art. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 what else? Wait, I did mud... When was the other time I did it? You... Just recently, right? Wasn't it not too... Was it recent? Not no. recent, recent, but... We're talking about doing it again for Lake Lucifer. No, no, no. I'm not talking about that. Shh and shh. No. Why are you um, I don't want anybody. What does that mean? 
shushing you. Sh- we don't want to give things away. I don't want to I'm not about. giving things away. I'm saying she likes mud. We're going to mud her up some more. I've okay. got lots of mud ideas. Okay. No, but what was we the last We call it mud thing? girl. Mud girl. Yes. She's mud girl when we do this. No, wait. So where was the other? I don't remember. It's been, how many projects have we done together? A hundred? I, I mean, know. who knows? I mean, it's, it's, it's off the <laughs> yeah. scale. So yeah. We, I mean, we'll go back to places a lot of times and that we've shot before and I've, I've literally can't even remember the shoot because we've done so many projects. Right. I mean, I don't I'm know. Like, I'm trying to think how else you've tortured hundreds me. Hundreds and hundreds. Yes. Hmm. Oh, like, is that hmm. it? Is that all I've tortured you? I haven't tortured you any more than that. Except for take you to places where there's bugs and bees and oh God, things snakes. that bite and snakes yeah. and things like that, which we do often. But you do that willingly. That's just not, that's not just me. Okay. Saying, hey, let's go find snakes. No, but that's Gary going, oh, we're going to go here today. And it's like, oh, okay, great. And then the next thing you know, it's kind of not what you thought it was. And it's like, oh, we'll just go off trail. Which, yes, you do find really neat stuff when you go off trail. I agree. But like this last trip we did, you know what I'm talking about? The one over to the old fort site where there's petroglyphs. Oh, my gosh. Here's oh. the here's the thing with this. Let me explain yeah, real that quickly. Thing, so that you have to admit that day was really buggy and it, it was wasn't buggy. a great. But the problem day. is Tabitha has um, a blood type or whatever. I don't know if it's the sugars or whatever. She attracts bugs. They love her blood. They, do. they go after her because we can be in places where I'm barely getting hit and she's just getting hit. A lot. And I'm sauce too. I will bug spray the hell out of me. And I hate using poison on my body. I hate it. I hate having that crap on me, but you know, in order to like save myself a little bit, <laughs> I spray up, I deed up. And, um, yeah, even then that day I did put quite a bit on that day. Yeah, I did. Cause I remember feeling nasty afterwards. Um, but that was what, a few weeks ago. Right. Remember last year though, when we got attacked by black flies, by biting black flies. Oh my God. That was this so was crazy. Bad. No, at l- you know, at, we were swarmed. it was so bad. All right. So we're, we ran, we ran. That's the day yeah, we but, ran okay, a long, wait, wait. a mile probably. He actually seriously was so, like upset and like running. Usually he's like, ah, it'll nah, pass. Whatever. No big deal. This was a swarm because, well, I felt and it they first were biting, and, and I and felt it, it like, first oh, God. and Gary's way ahead of me. We're heading out on this hike and I'm like, no, something keeps biting me. And I thought it was like, you know, just one thing. I think it was different ones, obviously coming out and attacking, but, and it was getting worse and worse the further we went into this hike. And then finally I'm like, I can't take it anymore. And Gary's like, okay, fine. We'll leave. I'm like, you can't feel this. And he's like, no, I don't feel anything. I don't know what you're talking about. And he thought I was crazy. And then we start walking and huh. Out so I, nowhere. I walked ahead oh. of her again. I'm usually, you know, a little ways ahead of her. Like and, a lot of ways ahead. And, uh, yeah, it was basically a hatch day is what it was. And these mm-hmm. things had all hatched and I hit another spot and boom, I got, I mean, these things, there were thousands of them. And they were black flies and, and they bit. They were biting they black were flies. Biting. And it was like, oh my God. And we tried to walk off to a new spot. Didn't work. They were there. We're like, this is, yeah, okay, this is not fun anymore. No. <laughs> so, so then we got to the car. What ran, happens when we get to the when we, we get to the jeep? What happens? What re- remind my remind me on this one? What? Are you just like, just run and get inside the car. I'll unlock it because you know I'm behind him. Yeah, and I so got he's that's like, right. Just, I, just throw your stuff in the front seat. So what I did was I ran <laughs> ahead as fast as I could. <laughs> To open the back hatch up, get everything thrown in, and then mm-hmm. get the door open for her, so that when she got there, all she'd have to do is basically just jump, jump in, in and close even with the, the backpack. Door. I have poles in my hands, you know, I have yeah. backpack, and this is another one of those days where I had a sarong, you know, because sometimes I wear it around my waist and just walk hike topless, or you know, sometimes you can wear it as a cape. And I actually, at that point, had to wear it as a cape, and I'm like running. I oh, had my you hands were, out with I the forgot poles. about that. Remember you were. That? I was in were, a sarong only. I didn't have you bug spray on. You hike, had no idea. Hiking naked, and and uh, so your yes. your your body was exposed. It was. To- that's why it was so bad. I forgot about that. That's yeah, right. my ass got bit so many times. Yeah. Though they weren't. You know what? I only. I thought I'd be marked up a lot more than I was. It wasn't so bad. But Those the ones markups, tend to go but away pretty hurt. fast. That thing. Holy crap. Right. Yeah. Thanks, right. Gary. It's your fault. <laughs> no, it's not his fault. But see, that's what I'm saying. Like we were just talking about how the, uh, that video we watched um, in Siberia. That's probably like what they de- those people deal with all the time. Sure. There's no way. Sure. I just can't. 
but I, but a, and I was explaining to her to tap the other day. It, part of the way it works, though, unfortunately, we human beings we allow our minds to get in the way. That's true. That's true. And let me share an example of this. So when I was in my early twenties, I spent a lot of time um, in northern Arizona and southern Utah, uh, southern Utah, on the um, the Hopi Reservation and the Navajo Reservation. So I was among the people a lot. And after a few years, I got to be good friends with some of the medicine people, the Hitalis, the medicine men and whatnot. Anyway, um, I was in a particular spot one day and I was with one of my good friends who was an old medicine man and, and, and it was fly infested and there were a lot of no and things like that. And, uh, I was getting hit, hit pretty good by these things and, and he wasn't at all. And, and it was like, it was just nothing. It was just another day for him. And I said, well, how do you do that? Like, why am I getting nailed so intensely and you're not getting hit at all? And he said, because I just accept that this is what it is and this is where we are and this is this natural setting. And I, and I didn't get it. I was in my 20s and was trying to understand all these things, but, you know, pretty naive. And it wasn't until much later that I realized that what he was basically doing was is he was his mind was literally um, programming and speaking to the rest of his body. And, it, and, and, and you, we can do this as mm-hmm. humans. We can actually activate cells and responses in really powerful ways if we know how to do it through our mind and he does and did and and that's why and i've heard this many times since then is is that basically what it is is a lot of it is psychological a lot Mm -hmm. of it is is you um um instead of having sort of like this you know white man's attitude of like you know oh my god nature's gonna kill me run you know that's sort of like our first response right Whereas they're like, no, what do you mean? The, the, the world isn't out to kill you. And, and, and in fact, we're a part of the world. So when you accept this and let your mind, you know, accept this, then they're not going to bother you. They really don't want anything to do no, with you. And I you. get that. I know this. So, but it's, I know but this. it's difficult but to it, do no, that. It, it, oh my gosh. It is really hard. And um, yeah. <laughs> no, I was thinking of cannabis because I was thinking of how you know, you would think because I take cannabis and when I, I mostly take it at night, sometimes I'll take it during the day. Um, but at night I I take it, but then I start going into this mode, right. Of like deep thinking and then like, yeah. And trying to understand things and figure it all out. And you would think that when I take cannabis in the day on a hike, I would have figured that out. Like knowing, because you know how I get at night, you, you've seen it to where I, I, I'm one with nature, you know, and I understand these things and I believe these things. But sometimes when you're on cannabis, when you're out there, maybe it's one thing to be laying in bed thinking about it. It's one way. But then when you're out there on cannabis, but it becomes, it's like, what? Be- maybe because your senses are heightened. Well, so that again, you're though, trying to, sure. I mean, I don't know if that's part of it. But it's not- programming. It's programming. Right. And it's really the way that we, oh, you know, we in sort of Western civilizations program, you know, we're so programmed to be, sort of, uh, afraid of adver- everything. No. Well, afraid of everything <laughs> and, and, and adversarial, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it's, you know, survival and nature is out to kill you. Like it's I not. said before, and this is a, this is an attitude, right? That's an attitude. And that's been programmed in like when you're yeah. a child, you're a little child. You don't think that way. You're mesmerized by the world. Wow. Right, right. You love, Oh, look at this insect. Look at this caterpillar. I mean, this is what children do. Right. Mm-hmm. And, when we're programmed, though, we start going to school. Oh, yeah, there's rattlesnake things. They'll kill you. There's scorpions. They'll bite you and sting you. They can kill right. you. You know, there's all of a sudden we're programmed to think of ourselves as outside of, an, of and completely separate from nature. And that's when we get into trouble because our mind is powerful. And so what, what happens? We get out, you get out in the, into those settings. And even though right. you're, you're under the influence of a little bit of cannabis, mm. which actually, as you said, does heighten your senses it does, and makes your senses yes. very powerful. Mm-hmm. What can happen though is, is that you're not allowing yourself to just be and allowing right. it to, it to take over so that you can mm-hmm. become one with the space that you're in your, the nature that you're in. Right. But instead what you do is you allow the other side, which is that kind of like paranoia thing. Right. They can sometimes kick in. You allow that to take over. And that's sad over. because normally I'm not like that with the paranoia. Only in those kind of situations. But yes, it is the programming because as a child, my mom and dad would, you know, to teach you something. It wasn't, it was supposed to be kind of like a lesson, I guess. But to me, I took it the wrong way. So for instance, um, if there was a fan in the room, like a cooling fan, you know, 
uh, rotary fan, would that be what you call it? Uh, my parents would say, don't put your finger by it, you know, otherwise it'll chop your finger off. So <laughs> in my mind, that fan was this big and it was going to eat my body up. You know, it was going to chop me to bits. So you if were I went exaggerating near it. everything. So I, I wouldn't go into a room that had a fan in it. Really? Yes. I would leave. I would cry and I would leave the same. And my dad would joke about, um, you know, oh, don't sit near the drain. You'll go down the drain when you take a bath. Well, that fucked me up so hard that for years I had to take a bath with my sister. Okay. And she's younger because <laughs> I wouldn't sit near the drain. So we'd put her near the drain and put me towards the bath. So you were taking things oh, really, yeah. my really mom, super my mom literally. My said that, you know, she'd say, okay, it's time to take a bath. That I'd be like, she'd have me naked and ready to go in the tub and I'd see it and I'd scream. I'd run out of the room and just scream and cry because I did not right. want to take Well, and that's programming, right? No, that's so, the same with so bugs. So what you're describing you know, is, is what I said is, is that, that, that we're mm -hmm. programmed yes. in ways that sometimes are not good. Mm -hmm. They're very bad because yes. what it does is, is, is it creates sort of like us versus it scenarios mm -hmm. where we feel separate. And this is a big thing in our adult lives that, you know, we've certainly spent a lot of time trying to get over and try to reprogram ourselves not to be fearful, oh, yeah. not to, but uh, to, to understand the situation that you're in, become one with it. Mm -hmm. And then it's you're so in hard. a powerful situation. Right. But you know, we Western people were like, Oh my God, everything is going to kill me and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And you know, and, and then you watch, you know, the news and all these things and you hear all these stories, which right. a lot of times they're one in a billion, but all mm -hmm. of a sudden, like you're afraid that it's going to be you. <laughs> That, you know, oh my God, oh, if I do this, it's right. going to hit me and mm -hmm. kill me. Well, the right. news story you saw was like one in a billion, right. but, but we like, you know, internalize that and go, oh my God, don't do this. Cause this can kill you. And it's right. ridiculous. It's all programming. It's terrible. The brainwashing that we do, that media does, that parents do, and they don't know that they're it just doing it's it. It's just but, exactly, but it, that's what it is. Yeah. I mean, that's just, I exactly. Know, it kind of sucks. So, yeah, I mean, right. I don't intentionally, when right. we're going off to shoots that are going to be tough shoots, I don't intentionally go out and say, hey, I'm going to make, you know, tap with a suffer today. These, look, a lot of times we shoot in wild places and that's, that's what comes with the territory. Mm -hmm. You're going to, you might get those thunderstorms, you know, you might get the bugs. I mean, it's just, and you, you, and you've got come a long way for no, sure. No, I have. For I sure. mean, I can get better and I will get better. It will happen just over time. <laughs> You would think I'm 49 years old and it's like, yeah, you haven't gotten over that shit yet. You're a young um, No, no, no. But you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's just kind of Yeah, weird. but you have a it's lifetime like, of being programmed right. that true, way. True, true. So now. True. So right. we, we so good example of this is mm. just the other day. Uh, we were in Saguaro National Park and I was up at these petroglyphs shooting and there were a couple of ladies there. It's a national park. It's, oh, yeah. I was just going to bring that up. That's so funny. There's okay, people there. There was, there was these, I walked up and there were these two ladies that were there ahead of me and they distinct New York accents could tell. Yeah, right and, on. and one of them was going on and I was real quiet. I like to give people their peace and let them enjoy the space. I don't, you know, I don't engage unless I'm asked to engage. And so this one lady, it was the mother of the two. And she's like, oh, I don't know. I got, I got bit. I don't know. I don't know what this was. I, I don't know if I'm in big trouble. And she kept saying this over and over and over again. Now this, you know, this is a trail. This is a, this is a national park. Yeah. Okay, so you, can, you know, it's not really. I got bit. Something bit me. It's something. <laughs> and she was really panicking. And, and at first, for the first few minutes, I just kind of kept silent about the whole thing. And then finally I, I said, I said, Hey, listen, I said, I, I, I'm sorry. I over, overheard everything you're, you're talking about. You know, you, you probably got hit by a deer fly. The deer flies are out right now and that's what it is. And it might cause a little teeny welt and it'll go away really fast, probably the same day, maybe a day or two, but it'll go away. There's no poisons or anything in it. And she's like, really, really? Oh my God. Thank you so much. Thank you. She was literally like panicking over a bug bite. And then she said, and it was funny because then she said, well, what about other things? Like what the if, snakes. What about the snakes? <laughs> the rattlesnakes. Because well, there are rattlesnakes. And she was going nuts on this. And, I, and then, it, <laughs> then it clicked. I'm like, okay, I'm dealing with a New Yorker. No offense. <laughs> I'm dealing with a New Yorker. I've spent my whole life in wilderness. I'm used to these things. Okay. I'm, I'm deprogrammed, if you will. Mm -hmm. This person is completely programmed. She thinks everything in nature is going to kill her. 
And so it was like, okay, listen. And so I kind of ran down the, the laundry list. I said, okay, this is what, you know, how you deal with the rattlesnake. They're going to warn you away ahead of time. Don't worry about it. You're going to hear it. If you hear them, stop, look around to see where it is and back off. No big deal. It won't kill me. It won't kill me. No, it's not out to get you. No. And, that, it, and that's true. It I wants mean, nothing to do but with But it you. is creepy as fuck. Yeah. And I, I said, when you hear that rattle. Oh my it God. Is, it is so creepy. I've run across rattlesnakes. Oh, we don't want to talk about it because we don't want it to appear again. So stop putting it out there to the universe. <laughs> okay, all right. You know, scorpions. I told her about yeah. scorpions, how to handle that, and mm-hmm. vinegar runes, and conos kissing bugs, and on and on and on. I told her these things, and I said, but, you, but here's the deal. Look, first of all, you're not going to get hit by a snake unless you're running a marathon through the wilderness, and they don't have time to warn you. Unless you're doing that, don't worry about it, okay? You're going to be fine. And then the second thing I says, look, everything else, it's not going to kill you. You know, even a scorpion, if it hits you, take some Benadryl in a few days, the pain will go away. away. Right. So it's none of these things are going to kill you. And she's like, oh, my God, are you are you you obviously know what you're talking about? And and thank you so much. And I said, hey, no worries, but just don't you know, enjoy your time here. Don't be afraid of na- these places. They're not going to kill you. You know. It's so like, then and meanwhile, I'm sitting in the car because I was tired of getting bit to shit by the tons of bugs in Saguaro National Park. I did. You got to admit. <laughs> well, they were hatching at that time. So. Yeah. And the deer flies were out. Oh. I'll admit. Now I didn't get I hit. I didn't get hit by the deer flies, but those yeah. little noceums and gnats, yeah. they were Everywhere. They're just irritating oh. is what they are. Yeah, and that was just, and that day, it was what, 101, 102? Yeah, not too bad. But the sun, there were no clouds. So you're like getting beat on by the sun, attacked by these freaking little gnats. They're in your ears, they're up your nose, they're biting your body. And I'm sweating, I'm like, oh, you gotta be kidding me. But yeah, that was that day. And I understand my, my New York is. I understand that. <laughs> sure. But did you say like, like, if there are, any are there other... snakes out there? Yeah. Are they going to bite me? That's basically deer what flies? it sounded like. What the hell is a deer fly? So any of you <laughs> New Yorkers who need advice in the wilderness, just send us a note. I'll tell you what to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. It really yeah. isn't. So For anyway. the mountain man, Gary. Well, okay. shall we? Shall we call it one? We've been talking about enough crazy experiences today and there's so much more too but uh there's a lifetime we can there's a lifetime so your website is tabithastevens.com seriously if you go to tabithastevens.com there it's her hub right so she's got a fan thing you can sign into there she's got the vod's that you can go to which again those are exclusive you'll find them nowhere else they're you know uncensored um it's a great place to go miss tab stevens at miss tab stevens on Twitter and Instagram. Great. And our fine art photography site, once again, is savageterritory.com. You can buy prints there, and we've got all the prices reduced a lot. These are some very unique, and some of those images on savageterritory.com are in places that have probably never been photographed before. Extremely rare. If you want to know, know more about uh, my film and TV stuff, that is going to be garyorona.com. That's my professional site. So, Because you're a professional man. We want them to subscribe, hit the (laughs) notifications button, come visit often. If you have any um, particular subjects that you would love to hear about from Tabitha, you know, you know, say so on Twitter. Is that cool? I mean, if you have any questions for Gary, you're the exciting one though. I'm just a guy who hikes up mountains, but you have the crazy experiences. Uh, Oh really? Okay. So we, all right, time out. I'm going to full spectrum. Full no, no, I, I got, well, yeah, I'm like SPF and shit. All right, I'm joking. <laughs> anyway. full spe- oh, yeah, full um, spectrum, right. Um, SPF. Skin cancer, okay. use your sunscreen, I'm proof. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're going to go into that on the next one. We'll, we'll talk about this on one of the other ones. Right. Because we got to tell everybody about this. Anyhow, what, now you stopped me from saying, oh, no, about exciting and things, you know. like Right. No, but what I, I don't mean it that way. You have, because of the, the, the world that you have shot in terms of films and TV, the celebrities that you're mm-hmm. friends with. Right. So you got all that. So let's call that the Hollywood part. Okay. okay. And then you've got these, you know, great experiences with me in the wilderness mm-hmm. and wild shooting and filming in crazy places. And then you've got your life, you know, in Las Vegas. I mean, you have a we, really, it's not, but I don't see well, we funny. do too, but I, I mean, it's a we thing. but your it's past, not... like you you could write probably 10 books on the, on the stuff you've no, dealt probably with. probably do one. Life just giant book it'd be like a thousand pages you know and I've tried to do that everybody I have I actually wrote little notes at one point they're in the computer I just can't focus 
and uh, it just does not work. Twice I've tried to have a ghost writer, both men, which Didn't I work think out. I need a female to yeah. do that. So you female ghost idea. writers. Um, yeah, it's, it's just hard for me. <laughs> I need somebody to sit and ask me questions. I can't just start typing it off the top of my head because then I'll start thinking of something else and then that will go into something else and the shit never gets done. So right. <laughs> with that said, I will do a book one day, one day. but I'm going to have somebody. Now you have to do it because you just promised. I know. I didn't. I keep telling her to do day? it. You have great, you have I, great material. I know, but I could talk about great. it. Great. And it's outside the box stuff. It's not this normal banal bullshit that you. Yeah. So anyway, with mm-hmm. that, thank you. Thank you. And uh, remember, press the subscribe button. (laughs) We'll see you soon.